Hi, Matt Rosendahl from Great Lakes Home Performance. I'm in the basement of a house right now up here in Michigan getting ready to do a duct blaster test and I thought I'd give you a, a tour of my equipment bag and show you some of the modifications that I've made to my duct blaster equipment to make testing go a whole lot easier. Okay, starting with the gauge mount, I took the stud clamp off the back of this and installed a magnet that I bought at Tractor Supply Company. It used the same hole and the same bolt size and everything, but this way I can mount it right to a lolly column or to the, to the ductwork of the furnace itself. Uh, most of the basements that I'm in don't have studs. This one happens to have a stairway that's close by, but actually the studs are sleepers running the, on the three and a half, so there's nothing to clamp it to, so that makes things a whole lot easier. You can also see that I have my gauge labeled with the different colors of tubing that I'm going to use, and I have my tubing taped so that all three tubes go together as one, and the end of it, the blue tube, is a little bit separate because that I put in the plenum. Now I'm testing at the air handler instead of at a return register because I've found by doing many, many tests that I get the best results by depressurizing the system and testing from the air handler. You'll also notice that I have a plexiglass transition piece on the air handler right here that I attached my round transition piece that the duct blaster came with that I've attached it to. I also slice my tape. This is a full roll of the 8-inch duct mask from Energy Conservatory, and I put it in the chop saw and slice it so that I have about a 3-inch wide piece and then another piece that's 5 inches wide for taping that to the register. And sometimes when I have real slimline registers or something else to tape off, like an attic access that isn't properly sealed or a filter slot, I don't want to use the full 8-inch wide tape, so these help me save a little bit of money on this tape because it's still $20 to $25 a roll. Now right in the duct blaster bag, of course, I have a six-way screwdriver that has two different sizes of Phillips, two different sizes of flat, and then each one of these is also a hex, so I can pretty much open any furnace cabinet that I need to with one screwdriver that I drop down into the bag. I also have this tape dispenser that I made out of a two-inch piece of PVC that I scrapped out of a dumpster and one of the straps that actually came with the DG700 bag. This comes with a couple of straps and what I can do is put this around my waist and snap it in place like that. So now I have an easy way to pull off a few pieces of tape and stick them to something and my hands are free. Especially handy when I'm up on a ladder. And it was just reused materials didn't cost me anything. Another handy thing that I've done is to take this lithium ion real lightweight little drill driver and I carry that in my duct blaster bag and I leave that it's actually a stainless steel self-tapping screw that I've taped into a hex head and that's my speed drill for drilling a little hole in the duct system to put my pressure uh, pitot tube. I don't know if you can see up in this duct system, I have my pitot tube up here in the plenum with the little point pointing up. Now, some people put that in the supply register, and there are a few supply registers in this basement, but what I've found is if there's a lot of leakage in that particular line where you're going to be putting that tube, then you're going to get inaccurate results. You might not even get any pressure at all, and you'll struggle to get any results. So I've found that it's best to test right down here, put the probe right there. Usually there's a register there, but this particular builder doesn't put one in. Now you might check with local codes. They might not let you drill a hole in the plenum like that. And I have some foil tape that I'm going to put over the top of that. Usually I'll drill it up you know, in a little out-of-the-way spot so that people won't even see the hole. This one I happen to drill right there because it's not really accessible up above. It's kind of cluttered up with some plumbing. So uh, I'm ready to do the test right now. I'll let you know how the test goes in another video about duct testing. If you like these videos and you have any questions about anything, be sure to subscribe and ask your questions down in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Again, this is Matt Rosendahl from Great Lakes Home Performance. Visit GreatLakesHomePerformance.com or MattKnowsThat.com for more information. Thanks.
for doing the duct blaster. And there's a few a little helpful 